Welcome everyone. In this week we will start off by creating this polyblast effect. This is an effect that is aimed to be used for a top-down perspective game. And the look is based around the idea of it fitting with a certain skin that is based around the look of having flat colors and sharp angles. We will touch upon some basic things first and then go over the resources that are needed for the effect. We are also going to have a look at mesh particles and see how they can help with slang the depth of the effect. And we will also go over the overall development of the look. We will also go over how to implement it in the sequencer and let it work together with the character. So without further ado, let's get started. So before we get started, let's get some general things out of the way first. So we're going to use two characters and these characters can be found on the marketplace. If you then go to browse and then go to epic content, look for Paragon Lieutenant Bellica and also look for Paragon Face. So if you then click on purchase and then do the checkout, then you should be able to just get them. They are all for free. So if you then go to your projects, they should be down here. So just make sure that you then make your project file and then click add to project and then search for your project and then add them to there. And if all works well, you should now be able to see the Paragon Lieutenant Bellica and Paragon face here in your, in your folders. What we will also do is pro provide you with a map to place your effects into and also some material functions. So these will be the material function alpha erosion, a sphere mask, a square mask, a swirl function and an angle fade. And what you need to do is if you go to your projects and then click, right click your project file and then show in folder. Then make sure to add the provided files into the content, map, content folder. And then they should pop up into your project file. Also make sure to add your effects categories for all of the following effects. So Nebula Slash, the Phase Beam, the Polyblast and the Pulse Bomb. So make sure to also add the materials, the meshes, the particles and the textures categories. Also make sure to add a general and add all of your general usage files in this folder just to make things a bit handier to access for yourself. What we'll also do is make a sequences folder and make sure that you then go into your map, click cinematics and then add a level sequence and make sure to save it inside of your sequences folder and call it whatever the way you want it. And in this case, already made one and just make sure that you then place it inside your level because what we will do here is uh, basically this allows us to trigger our effects and also then it allows you to attach them to our characters um, but this is something that we will touch upon later in uh, in the in the coming weeks so for anything texture related it is good to check once you open them that you then make sure that the texture group is set to either effects or effects not filtered. This is basically helping with the compiling of the shaders. So make sure that you then set it right here. And then also make sure that you then, if you drop this down, right now, as you can see, this import texture is set to 2K. And then make sure that if you type in uh, 2024 in here, then you can see it will be reduced and also make sure that you then if there is anything that is a bit bigger or bigger than needed make sure to reduce it down and i think that should be it so for meshes and let's say we import one ourselves right now so if you then import a mesh make sure to check two options if you go to the vertex color import options right here make sure that these are set to replace if you if you use vertex color. So that, that will mean that it will then replace the vertex color with the one you exported it with. 
and then also make sure that you then and also set do not create material and tick import textures off and as you can see you will get this error but since I, I exported it from Houdini it doesn't come with any smoothing groups but that should be fine because all of our normals will be reconstructed inside of the of the engine and if you exported it with the normal sub then it should be all, all good so if you now open the mesh and then check for the vertex colors right here if it shows up like this then it should be all right so let's say if you want to move a certain texture over that is already in use with a certain material so let's say if you then move this over to another folder right here what will usually what will usually be left behind is called a redirector and what this does it means that it will still refer to the old location of this certain texture and this reference is now this reference now needs to be fixed up so if you then go to filters miscellaneous and then choose redirector if you then see one of these pop up right click on them and then choose fix up so this will basically mean that the correct reference will now be referenced inside of the project and this is a good habit to get into to check upon this once you're done because any of these redirectors will cause big problems inside of your game if these are not fixed up so it's a good habit to check these and that should be about it time to get started all right so let's go over our textures so the look we're going to go for is something that is heavily inspired by the movie promare so the defining look is that it has like a clear distinction between the core and its silhouette and then it also has this sh uh, like shadow going on and that's sort of what we're going to go for in this um with this look so another thing is is the the way we set it up here is that we sort of divide all of, all these elements into separate masks and then color them inside of our shader basically so what we'll do then is also give it a soft gradient look as well it is a subtle thing but it will also help with the overall look of the effect so another thing we're also going to do is make a couple of elements so what we'll do is make some sparks and these basically can be sort of randomized in in our particle system and they need to sort of be very pointy and very sharp and what we'll also do is creating a muzzle flash so these will be basically divided up into two parts the first part is the side view but since this is a flat plane that is aimed towards the camera but also constrained towards the, the forward axis it will not show up when once you look at it from a uh, like from a front view so what we'll do here is also make a muzzle flash texture muzzle flash texture basically that works from the side and from the front so that it sort of uh, can catch the disappearance of the side view muzzle flash bit and it all looks a bit more cohesive and what we also do is make a stylized flash and use that as kind of our flash frame so to speak so what we'll start off with is the sparks and we first put down a polygon node and the only thing you kind of need to do here is scale it down a little bit so and then we take a quad transform node and if i can shoot this off really really quickly so we basically basically take the four points here and then shape it into something that's not really uniform but sort of still quite pointy yeah you kind of want to prevent it looking like the uniform diamond shape so kind of that's why i used this node so to speak and yeah you can also divide it up with using a polygon with like three sides and then like squish it down sort of uh, sort of what i did right here like over here i basically made sure that everything was sort of pointing upwards and also then laid it out like this so it then so it then can be randomized within our particle system so to speak so then i added a little bit of a glow by blurring 
the input here and then blending this together with the original result. So as you can see, it gives a little bit of a glow. And set the blend mode to lighten. Over here is a radio gradient that I sort of left as is. What I did here was I put it through a transform 2D node. So what I did then is scale it up by 200%. And then, then made sure that the middle of the sphere is sort of at the bottom of the canvas. And what I did here was also scaling it down by a third. I see I need to put 0.33 in there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, like this. So this will basically be used as a erosion map if you then combine this together with the original result right here. So this will basically be the erosion map that's going to be used. So and scaling it down would not look too good. So that's why you choose the erosion map approach. So if you then combine this right here in the RGBA merge, a handy thing to note is that the green channel will yield you a bit of a higher quality in terms of like compression. So that's why I sort of put the most important element in the, the green channel, so to speak. And then you can basically leave the uh, erosion map in the red channel because that's a little less important. Like the discrepancy in quality should be fairly minimal, but it's, uh, it's good to just leave it in there because it should be fine enough. And for the one in the blue channel is something that we go over right now. So put the polygon right here and then turn it 45 degrees. Then I scaled this down quite a bit. And what I did then was copy this over and then and then turn this 90 degrees by pressing the 90 degrees clockwise right here. As you can see, like this. Then I combine the result and also make a smaller version of this input right here and then combine it into this. And I put it into a bevel node and then make sure it is set to a negative value right here, like minus 0 0.25. And I will use this both as the gradient for the coloration and the mask for the actual like silhouette of the star. And then this can be put into the blue channel of the RGBA merge. And then this can be put into an, an output node. And then we give it the name, the Gunflash Park, or any name that you would like to give it, because that's all up to you. And then give it the usage uh, right here, because if you then add an item right here, I set it to RGB and then set it to mask. So this just makes this just makes sure that the texture will not be will not be exported with a alpha key. And then if we then move on to the next thing, so this will be the side view of the muscle flash. So what I did here was I grabbed these two elements and sort of left them a bit, in a bit of a bigger bigger state, so to speak. You see. Because these are going to be the inputs for the tile sampler that I'm putting down. So what this does, this allows you for a lot of control in terms of randomization for patterns, uh, for randomization of color, scale, and rotation. And the things you need to do here is making sure that the pattern input is set to two, or in, in this case, if you want to make uh, give. Um, so in this case, if you want to input more patterns, just Make sure the, the pattern inputs are a bit higher. So this should be enough. And then the tile sampler like will randomize the pattern inputs for you automatically. So what this does is that I made a radial gradient and put this into a normal. And what this does is this will basically act as a, a vector displacement map. So all the patterns will basically point towards the, the, like the center right here. So if I go to rotation, 
Right now, the, the render rotation has not been put on. But if I now turn this down, as you can see by default, we'll all point into the same direction. But if I then crank this up to one, it will now, it will now all point towards the center right here. So this allows you to sort of create that um, burst shape. And over here, what I did was making sure that the uh, mask right here is taking care of any patterns that are falling inside of this. So this means that only the patterns will be spawned inside of this area. So if I then go down to mask threshold, as you can see, like it, it leaves a little bit of extra patterns that you do not want to have. So in this case, I sort of put this down by just a little bit. And then you can see if this is if this is a shape you want. And then if you want uh, like different types of shapes, so then play around with this. As you can see, it sometimes fall, falls, falls outside of the center and it will not yield you like a very good shape. So this is something that you kind of need to experiment with. Check what type of like variation in patterns feels good in terms of, and what type of like scale will feel good to you. So this takes a bit of tinkering. And then I basically did the same here, but then I simply just copied it over and then sort of tweaked around with the settings a bit more. And the only thing I did here was is scaling this down a little bit. And then made sure to sort of trim off the ends by subtracting the inverted result of the uh, like tile sampler. And then make sure that the these end bits are cut off. And what you can also see is that I repositioned it a little bit so it it falls within like a like the good portion of the like usable UV space. So right here, what I did here was create a shadows. So set the set shadow distance like something around right here. But you might want to overdo it a little bit because from a far away distance, the actual like shadow actually going to create will not be that visible. So you might want to overdo it by just a, just a bit more. What I did here was invert it and then apply the histogram scan on it but as you can see it now sort of falls outside of it so might want to reduce it just a tiny bit more but what i did here was basically clamping these values of the shadow and then this will use you the outline of uh like of our muzzle flash from the side so this is basically our core And if we then combine these together, this will, this will give you the actual like uh, overall alpha. And then we put this into the green channel. So this is some uh, the actual an outline. So we can then put this into the blue channel. And right here, this is just the mask for the for the core. And then we put this into the red channel. And right here, what you can also see is that we started off with creating a flat fill. So this is really handy for creating randomized patterns in terms of color and also for gradients. But I, in this case, I just wanted to make sure that I created a gradient that sort of conformed to the bounding box of this pattern. So what I did then is create a flood fill, flood fill from gradient and then reduced the contrast a little bit and and then make sure that the banding doesn't become too apparent this because that will show up quite well uh, just make sure that the banding is reduced to like a minimum and then over here then i inverted the result of this combined result for in for the alpha and then added a shadows Put this to quite a high distance and then combine this together in a blend and set this to subtract so what this will be 
is the erosion map for this for the side view uh, for the side view muzzle flash and this can be put into the alpha and then turn it sideways so this will make sure that if you then use velocity aligned particles because that's what we're going to use we then make sure that it's in the, the right orientation once you spawn it in and that can be put into the output and then name it the way you want and then make sure that the usage is set to RGBA so it will then be outputted with the alpha so let's go on with the front view muzzle flash so then I again took these patterns but in this case I put them into a splatter circular so what this does this will then randomly place your your input patterns into like a circular uh, like a circular pattern I up the pattern amount and ring amount to something that will give you some quite a pointy result and then make sure that the most like the most of the randomization comes from the positioning right here but the only thing you need to make sure of, sure of is that it's quite a cohesive uh, cohesive mass in the middle but also combine this with with another splatter circular that is a bit more broken up and then combine these together to create more of a cohesive front view muscle flash so what I did here was is then I threw the I threw this into a slope blur and what this does is then it sort of pushes these pixels according to the input since and since this is a inverted uh, radial gradient it sort of pushes all these pixels towards the center and what this does is it basically pushes all these pixels inwards so this entire shape could be, become a little bit smaller but still re retain its silhouette so this is what it sort of becomes and this is sort of done by again uh, grabbing the histogram scan and then inverting this and what I mean here is that the histogram scan is set to a value with like a, the highest contrast so it will only grab a singular value right here and it's also to make sure to get rid of all these um, like this, this stripiness right here and then eventually we blend this together by itself so we can make sure um, as you can see there's a bit of stripiness in there but that should be fine and then plug this into the red channel and down here we will sort of do the same thing again by applying a slope blur onto it and setting it to sort of the same settings invert it and then blend it together so what this will do is basically create the um, erosion map for the for the front of your muscle flash as you can see it is not very like accurate in the certain places but since it's quite fast that should be fine also make sure to apply this again so you up the contrast of this erosion map a little bit more so you can make sure that all the values will be eroded away properly if we then grab the histogram scan again and then make sure to grab the the uppermost values here this could also be like a good check to see how it works and then make sure that and this also makes sure that the actual like um, erosion map works properly so you you will not be left with like a gap in the beginning and also will eat all of the values away properly at the end so that's kind of a handy thing for that and then we can put this into the green channel right here so over here what we can then do is grab the shadows sort of in a similar fashion how sort of in a similar fashion as how we did for the side view also apply the histogram scan again then invert it 
In this case, it could actually be maybe a bit bigger. So like I said, it could be like overdone a bit more. So it is still viewable from, uh, from a far distance. Like this should be good. Then invert it and then put this into the blue channel. And then eventually the alpha will actually be the aforementioned erosion map. And then this can be put into the output right here and then name it accordingly. And also again, use the RGBA for the usage. And that should be it. And as you can see right here, I also created another variation with a little bit less detail. Uh, this is simply done by grabbing this entire chain and then copying it over and then tweaking the settings a bit so you get a, a different different shape but still adhering to the, the, prin the principles of the overall look. So that should be it for the textures. Okay, so let's go over the meshes. And in this case, I used Houdini for this. And what this mesh is, is basically the carrier for the front view muscle flash and as you can see it holds up once you view it from the front and it has a bit of depth so it will also look good from the side and the back as well so what i did here was i put down a circle and set this to polygon and give it uh, eight divisions then added a polyfill and did a surface offset in 0 0.5 so you get sort of the, the point right here and then make made sure to delete this front face then i put down a uv texture on it and did a orthographic projection in the x-axis so it will now show up right here as the front view look then put on a uv quick shade to see if it all works well then transform it according to the bounding box so you make sure that the point right here is set in the zero world position because this will mean that you can then also scale it uh, right here in its axis to make it flat or scale it up so you have even more depth in it if you if you want to do so and what i did then was scaled it up by a hundred so so it will be in uh, so we'll be in the same uh, unit size as Unreal users, so to speak. What you can then do is uh, put down a film box, drop in the out, or what you can simply do is go to File, Export, and then Film Box FBX, and that should be all good to go. So if you now go to the other one, so what this is, is basically sort of a stroke wave. And it is only built up of two strips. And since we're going to basically use something that is unlit, this can basically hold up from every like angle because it will still show off some, some surface area that it can still view this effect from, so to speak. So, so it will kind of look as a cohesive element, so to speak. So if you dive in, so what I did was put down a line right here. And I made sure that the origin is set to the middle, as in, uh, let's say the length is then divided by two, and that's where the origin of the line will be. Then I also put down a circle and set the divisions to four so you get this so you get that square shape or diamond shape what i did then was i grabbed the labs curve sweep and set the mesh type to line and you can keep the divisions to one and the up factor is set in the y so you can then get get this Then I put a UV transform on, on it. So what this does is I typed in one divided by dollar size X and dollar size Y. So the UV will then be 
put inside of the 0 to 1 UV space. And then make sure to see if it all looked correctly. Because what we'll basically do is put down a noise that is then eroding it in in the in the V direction right here, so it will sort of be broken up in sort of stripes. I did the same thing right here. But in this case it looked like this. But what this basically does is that we made the that we made the ring, but then for the front view. It's a bit finicky, but what I did right here was scaling it down. By giving it a scale of zero in the x-axis and also scaling it a bit up. So what you can see right here is that I wanted to sort of line it up with the, the other um, strip that I just made. This, can, this could, can be eyeballed pretty much, but it should be somewhere like in the middle. Then also do another one of those UV transform with the one divided by size X and size Y. And then merge these together. So you now have this. Yeah, the thing is as well is that you, it is best to like UV all of these uh, strips like it is best to UV these strips uh, separately and then merge these together again. Because it could basically share the same um, like UV space. And what I did then again was scale it up by 100. And also put a labs quick material on it. So this makes sure that the, the material is now uniform for both of these meshes. Because what, what will happen then is if you import this into Unreal, it will now assign two different materials to to this mesh. So that will basically be for each strip. And putting this down will negate that, uh, that error, so to speak. And again, we can then export this out as is, and that should be fine. And that's, uh, that's about it for the meshes. All right. So let's go over all of the materials for the Polyblast. But before we start, make sure to import your textures and your meshes. So for the meshes, let's give an example right here. Just make sure, sure to set the material import method to do not create material. And the import textures can be ticked off and the rest can be left as is. Let's cancel this. And as for the textures, the compression settings right here can be set to masks. I left the texture size at 1K. The sRGB will automatically be set to unticked, so that should be good. And for the texture group, I set it to effects not filtered, and all of these settings are applied to all of all of these like textures basically. So make sure that it is set to that, so that should be good. So now we start with the sparks so this is something that we're going to use for the sparks but also for the star that you sort of can see right here and since they both use the same setup we might as well share we, we might as well make it share the same shader so what i did first was put down a texture sample and then uh, make it refer to the spark texture right here if you then Go to the channel picker here. This is basically a a component mask that I then converted into a parameter. So what you can then do is make sure make sure that you can then choose each channel instead of doing a switch in between all of these ch these channels and allows you to check the blue the blue channel of this texture. So in this case, what I did here was I put down a d dynamic parameter to give an inverted result of basically the input texture right here. And this will be for the erosion map in this case. So this allows us to then like uh, color our 
and I color our sparks and our star. And in, and in this case, what happens was the inverted colors would basically be, uh, be acting as like a flash frame color for a little bit more impact. Because what I did for the star right here was I then inverted the gradient and then applied a dark purple color to it and and then quickly switched in between these colors of sort of a brighter yellow to a that like the aforementioned purple so it sort of gives a bit of a bigger impact so to speak and that's why i added this in and this just and this just makes sure that you can then sort of switch in between those in inside of your emitter and the good thing is is that you want to sort of you want to sort of change this on the fly so that's why i added this in there then make sure to multiply this on top of the particle color and it should be all good to go. So the particle color alpha is driving a lerp in between one and a uh, lower value. And in this case, what I did here was, uh, for example, if a certain texture will dis disappear right away, and like the alpha value has not reached zero yet, <clears throat> you can then sort of increase the amount a bit so it will make sure that you have a full control over the range between zero and one in terms of the curve that you then ap apply in the particle color alpha to sort of fade away your textures with. So kind of what this looks like is if I put down a debug, debug time sign, So as you can see, this is how it will sort of get eaten away. And if it would then like uh, do this properly, it will not like disappear right to, uh, like, like it will not disappear too early, so to speak. So then you know it's all good. And we basically built this in as sort of a safety measure for any textures that might have the same problem where it disappears too early. So what I did then was I put the same into an if the B could be left as is. So the B accepts the lerp input, so to speak. Then I put a constant into A if A is bigger than B and if A is equal to B and then put a zero into the last input and then, and that can be put into the opacity mask. For the blend mode I said is to masked. So this will become available once you set it to this blend mode and set the shading and model to unlit. And that should be about it for this material. And if we then go over to the star flash right here, and just make sure to set the erosion mask to a bit lower because the threshold in between the, the highest and the lowest values is a bit higher right here, so this should be good. For the channel picker, I picked the blue channel, so this is what you get for that result. And then let's move on to the poly ring. So let me visualize this by also putting in a debug time sign. I put this into the B. Because right now it will start off as fully uh, transparent, but we kind of want to see what the effect is. So what I did here was I put down a texture coordinate and set the UV, UV tiling to two in just the U co coordinate. And you can basically pick any random texture you want. Because you want to have some random streaks going on. And what I also did was I put this in uh, together with, with an add. And lurped in between a value of zero and one and put down a particle random value note down and put this down into the alpha. So what this does for every randomly, like for every instance of uh, this particle, it will then offset the texture by a random amount. So let's say the actual like erosion look will look different for each like mesh that is spawned in or at least each particle that is spawned in. So we then put this into a generated band set the width to 0 0.5 and then multiply it. So, so as you can see, then we'll also shrink down. 
So this is actually just to make sure that in the sort of the uh, like obtuse angles, it also gets faded out properly. This is just a safety measure, but it is something that you won't need. And then we put this into an if again. I put it down sort of in the similar put the similar settings as the Sparks main has. And in this case, I sort of uh, in this case I visualize with the debug time sign. But what you can do is simply put the particle color alpha into the B and delete this and put the emissive color straight and put the um, like particle color straight into the emissive. Make sure that the two sided is ticked on. The shading model is set to unlit and the blend mode is set to translucent. All right, so let's move on with the gun flash front. So what I'll do is, is I'll actually construct this from scratch and I will show you how to make this work with the textures we created earlier. So let's go over here. So what I'll do first is set the blend mode to oh, masked and the shading model to unlit and tick on two-sided because uh, this will basically be used with a, a mesh particle that is and that needs to be shoot from both sides, so to speak. And first off, we'll start with holding down T and clicking with the left mouse button inside of the viewport. And then we'll actually grab the muscle front texture and select it. If you could view it now. As you can see, um, like it gives a very like blurry outline. And the way we're going to resolve this is by putting the mid map value to absolute. So this will get rid of the mid maps and will basically give you sort of the uh, like uh, the clearest result. It is however not advised to use this too often. And in this case, we're going we just we will just use it to. Um, make sure it gets the best visual quality, but overall it's best to avoid it as much as you can. And as you can see, the sample type is now set to mask because that's something we already set up in inside of our texture settings. So what we'll do first is we're going to basically color our masks in with a subtle gradient and layer them on top of each other. And what we'll do first is starting off with the overall main silhouette and what we'll do is is putting down a vector 3 holding down 3 and then clicking lift mouse button will give you that note and we'll go for a sort of bluish purplish color but set the value of it to 3 in this case What we also do is, if you look for our sphere mask material function, and then paste it in here, you can pretty much leave that as is, but just make sure to set the radius to 0 0.6 or so, like this, and then multiply this on top of each other. And if we then grab the red channel here, and then also put this into a multiply, actually hook it up like this, we will get this, and that should be it for the main, uh, like the main silhouette. So if we now move on to the core, so that will be this bit right here. We'll essentially do the same thing. Just copy this over. But in this case, we'll, we will change this to something like this. Like a desaturated yellow. If we then combine this again with the green mask, 
Yeah, that shields you this. But as you can see, we still want to have a bit of fall of here. So what we'll do is just reduce this down. And actually play around with the power and strength of this node a bit more. See what this will, what this will yield. Just to make sure that there is a bit of a fall off going on. I think this should be okay. So what we'll do then is we grab a lerp, a linear interpolate in this case. We'll grab this and put this into the A. And then we grab this one and put it into the B. I think in this case we should grab our green mask. Yes, and there we go. That that should that should give you this result. So that's the first layer sort of done. And what we'll do now is we put down another lerp and put this result into the A. And we'll also put down another vector3 node. And this will basically color in our shadow, uh, like our shadow mask. You should then plug this in and then grab the Blue channel. Let's see what this gives us. I think that should be about right. So let's see what we can do. Maybe different, like maybe change this up just a little bit more. Just to see what fits well with the, uh, with it in terms of colors. And I think that should be fine. So we can plug this into the emissive color. And then if we move on to the opacity, what we'll put down is a if node. And then plug in the erosion map into the A input. And we're going to compare this with the particle color. And in this case, the particle color alpha. So what this will do is will, this will basically then erode our results right here. What we'll put down is two constant nodes by holding down one and pressing the left mouse button. You plug this into the third and fourth input, uh, this one that is, and set this to one. And the final input can be and like a disk constant can be put into the final input right here. And then plug this into the opacity mask. So what this will so what this will give if I put down a debug time sign just to see what it will look like. And then stop previewing this. As you can see right now, this is how our erosion map is going to work. So and what this will give is that you can uh, then see how the erosion is going to work once you um, activate the particle color alpha in our in our system, so to speak. So and I think as you can see, it's it's sort of working correctly. So plug this back in and delete this. So that should be fine. If we now move on to the gun flash side, it is essentially going to be the same. So what we are going to do is we can basically copy this entire thing over. Or in, in your case, you can basically also copy your material and then open it up. And just make sure to set it, set the name to the gun flash side. And what we'll also do here first is setting the blend mode to masked. 
chaining model to unlit. Uh, tick on two sided. And then paste this in. Plug this lerp into the emissive color and the if into the opacity mask. So one thing we're going to change first is this texture sample right here and then grab the the texture for the side. In this case the muzzle mask right here. And then plug this in. So this is still this is now not really looking correct because what we will actually essentially do is change this sphere mask over to a linear gradient. So what we'll do is we'll put down a texture coordinates and let's delete this first and put down a lerp. Set the constant a to minus one and leave the constant b as is, because what you'll, we will essentially do is, this will basically uh, give you a, so basically this will act as a linear gradient, but this lerp will allow you to then uh, shift the the actual like range of that gradient up or down. So what we'll do then is add this together, and then plug a constant into the alpha, And then put down a component mask. And then in this case, select the green channel. Oh, actually, since there's nothing showing up, let's set this to 0 0.5 for now. So this will give you the, the result that is now unaffected by this this lerp right here so let's actually plug this into the multiply right here so this will act as our mask as you can see the, the sort of the follow is not really within the correct range so what we'll do is increase our value or decrease our value in this case Not really correct yet. And let's see, see what this will do. I think that this should be fine, like around 0 0.3 or so. Let's copy this over and also plug this into the main silhouette color. And let's see what happen what will happen if we put this to 0 0.6. And I think that should be perfect. And let's also see how the erosion map works. Not a hundred percent correct, but since this is quite fast, it should be fine. But in case you're not happy with it, you can always like adjust your erosion map in inside of Substance again and um, re-import it. So, so then it will work according to your liking. And let's plug this back in. And that should be it for the materials. All right, so let's start by making our emitters and constructing our system. So first off, we're going to make some general use emitters that we can then use later in other systems as well. What we do now is uh, if you go to your polyblast and then your emitters folder, let's go to effects and then the yeah, great emitter. new one from templates and in this case we just go for a completely empty one and what we're going to do is turn this into a mesh emitter 
make this mesh emitter underscore an E. So what we'll do here is just simply define some basic nodes, uh, some basic nodes that we can then reuse later. And what we'll do here is that we then can leave the emitter settings as is. In the emitter updates, let's put down a burst and set this to one. In the particle spawn, we we put down a mesh orientation. There we go. I can leave that as is. In the particle update, we can put down a scale color. And uh, leave that as is. And uh, put down a scale mesh size. And that should also be good as is. And in the render, we can delete the sprite render and then put down a mesh render. And you can pretty much leave that as is as well. So yeah, as you can see, the, the particle mesh is now empty, but we can just add that, add that later once we start constructing the system. So that should be it for the mesh emitter. So now let's make another one, but this time it's going to be for a sort of a spark burst. Let's do, do the same thing again. And make an empty one. There's like a burst template already, but we're just going to make our own. And in this case, we're just going to make this spark burst underscore an E. So for the emitter settings, we can leave it as is. That should be fine. In the emitter updates, we put down a burst. I set this to around 10 or so. In the particle spawn, let's put down a calculate size by rotational inertia by mass. And also put down a at velocity in cone. As you can see, it will give you an error at first, but if you can then fi fix issue, Then we'll add the apply initial forces to our particle spawn, so that should be fine now. So let's give this uh, some random values and we can uh, say 2000, uh, 2500, just to make sure that it all works. Uh, so the cone axis to Y for now. Uh, set the cone angle to about 15. In the general particle spawn settings, we can randomize this a little bit and make it quite short. Say 0 0.3 and 0 0.4. Turn on the mass mode and set this to random. And give it some uh, random values of 2 and 3, so it should be fine. If you go into back into the cal calculate size by rotational inertia by mass again, we set the height to five, so this will give the elongated look of the sparks. And that should be it for the particle spawn. So if you now go to particle update, we put down a gravity force. And again, you get, get, get this error and let's just press fix issue, so it should be good. And you can pretty much leave this as is because the minus 980 that is essentially what the actual like, gravity on Earth comes down to. Also put down a drag and put this above the soul forces and you can also lift it as is. And what we also put down is a scale sprite size by speed. Set this to 1 and set this one to 2. The velocity threshold can be set to like a 2000. And also turn on sample scale factor by curve. And we can leave that for now.
So, and in the end, we also put down a skill color and turn this into a linear color RGB and also turn the alpha into a float from curve and you can sort of leave that as is. So if you then go to the sprite render, make sure to set this to velocity aligned. And if you can see if it all works. So that's kind of all working. So that should be it for the spawn burst. So let's move on with another one of the general general use emitters and let's make this a flash emitter like something we can use for like very short flashes or any glows basically that we can apply to our effect for a little bit of extra visual flare so let's do negro emitter again and then choose the empty again name this flash underscore ne so also again save this uh, first. So again we can leave this pretty much as is. In the emitter update we again put down a burst and set the spawn count to one. In the particle spawn we also put down a camera offset and give this a initial value of like a hundred. Should be good. In the general particle spawn, we put down a lifetime of 0 0.5, just to test if it all went all as well. We can set the sprite size mode to uniform and turn this into, uh, and turn it up to like 250. In the particle update, we can also do a scale sprite size. And also make sure to turn this into a scale float. Let's actually multiply this vector two by a multiply vector two, and then turn this B into a float, and then turn this one into a float from curve. And you can pretty much leave this as is for now. And then what we also do is a scale color and then turn this into a, a linear color RGB and then turn this into a scale linear color from curve and also turn the alpha into a float from curve and the sprite render can be pretty much left as is so that should be fine. So let's move on with a specific note that is going to be applied to the effect that we're going to make. So, and this will be a emitter that is specific to the side view blast of the, of the effect. So let's make another emitter and create another empty one. And let's make this muscle flash side underscore an E. And let's open this. So again, we can leave the emitter properties as is. In the emitter update, we're going to place a burst instantaneous and set this to one. In the particle spawn, we will place a add velocity and then fix issue. So what this does, we're going to basically um, make the alignment set to velocity aligned and give this a very low initial velocity value. So what this does is then we'll point uh, the velocity in the same, I mean the alignment will be the same as the velocity, so those will then be aligned, so to speak. So what we do then is also make sure that in the general, uh, like in the general particle spawn settings, we put down 
the lifetime to run 0 0 0.15. The sprite size mode will be set to non-uniform. Set this to 100 and 100. Because what we'll do then is actually scale these, uh, these coordinates individually later. In what we'll do then is go to the particle update. Add a scale color. And you can pretty much leave the scale RGB as is, and the scale alpha can be turned into a float from curve. And we're going to adjust this a little bit later. And we can also add a scale sprite size. And what we'll do this is basically turn this into a float 2D from curve. So, because what this allows you to do is then scale. Uh, both coordinates separately, as you can see here. And we're going to dial this in right now. So let's right click on this handle and turn this into an auto. And we can start off by putting this like around 0 0.5. I mean 0 0.5 in value. So move this out of the way first. This is zero and zero point five. And this handle can be set to around like zero point five and two or so. And what we'll do with the X is set this to zero and zero. Also turn this into the auto key interpolation. Set, set this key to around 0 0.6 or so. And set this to around 0 0.5. And let's put down another key. Set the time to 1 and the value to 1 again. And also turn this to auto. Actually turn this one to auto as well. So if you then... Let's visualize this. Uh, so as you can see, it sort of scales up in Y first and then expands because kind of that's sort of the move. That's sort of the movement we want in in this burst. And what we'll also do is if you actually add some velocity right here and set this to one. If you now also go down to the sprite render and then set this to velocity aligned. So you can now see it will then point towards the X direction. And then also make sure to offset the pivot in Y. As you can see, it will now scale up in X as well as Y, but it will give sort of the forward motion of the of the flash uh, basically. So that's one we're kinda gonna go for here. So, and also make sure to refer back to the muzzle flesh material. Let me see where, put this again. So the gun flesh main, I think in this case, yep, that should be about correct. Okay, so now let's dial in some of the erosion map settings right here. This uh, handle can be set to zero. As you can see, it will now just scale up and stay as is. Right here, we're going to put this in around 0 0.6 and put down another one at like seven and turn this value all the way up to one. But as you can see, we need to crank this up a little bit and that's kind of for the lower values that is because it still gives you like a fully opaque uh, like particle card. So turn this to something around 0 0.025. Or let's see how, far, how low we can go. And I think that should be around, around correct, but feel free to also like adjust it to your likings as well. 
we just want want to make this very like snappy and quick so i think that should be about it for for this one so let's move on with creating our system so let's close this down and let's go to effects niagara system and let's just create an empty system for now and let's name it the poly blast underscore ns for negra system and what we'll do is just to make sure uh let's place it in our level and one thing to note is that for the actual orientation of the entire blast we'll just keep x as our main axis so to speak so what it'll do is i place some emitters down in some odd angles and this will help to see if it all works in in the like in each orientation so to speak and maybe go for some downward ones as well as upwards well this is just to just to like check if it all works uh, works properly so let's save this and let's go on with creating our front blast first so what we'll do now is we will drag in uh, one of our mesh emitters and put it onto the timeline and what we'll do first is we select our particle particle mesh in this case and then pick the front front blast mesh that you've just made and then assign it here and since this does not have a material assigned to it yet you can then add it here by taking on the override materials and then add elements and then let's pick the uh, gun flash front main or um, like the one you've just made for in regards to that material and as you can see right now it does not show anything yet but this is because we have set up our scale color to be at one initially and let's see one, one thing we also didn't do just yet is put down the scale of the entire mesh and as you can see now it should show up it should be fine so what we'll do now is scale this up to 1.3 and what we'll also do is put down see here uh, let's put down the initial particle spawn options first so let's make this 1.3 or so and i think that should be it for for that let's go to mesh orientation and in this case what i did was And let's go to mesh orientation and you can leave leave it as is pretty much so let's shrink this down a little bit what we're going to add now as well is the is the velocity so what this will do is that we also velocity align this uh Particle, mesh particle velocity so just add velocity to it then fix issue and type in one into the x and that should be it for for this in what we'll also do now 
is if you go to the particle update, we can go to the alpha and then convert this into a curve. And what we'll do now is go to zero. Uh, I mean, if you go down to this first handle and put this down to zero and put the, the value to 0 0.01, so it should be fine. And then the second handle right here, put this down to a value of one and the time of one as well. So you can see it gets now, it now gets eaten away. So if we stop the emitter for a second here, and I saw there were some problems. So right here, sort of the, the added texture is sort of getting cut off. So we're going to fix this now. So if you go to our material, let's go to here and then open the gun, gun flash front. So what we're going to add here is if you then visualize this first. So we're going to add a skill UVs by center. And then plug this in. And then make sure to put down a texture coordinate. And plug it in as is. So for the, for the texture skill, what we're going to do is turn this into a parameter. But uh, the, the thing is the thing to turn this in, we're going to turn this into a parameter. But the thing we're going to do here is put down two constants. You do this by holding down one and then clicking in the editor. And set this to like zero port nine. But also turn this into parameters. And then we call this size, size X and size Y. And then append these together so it becomes a flow two. And save it. And let's see if this works out. And yeah, that should be fine. So let's move back to the system and then actually return where we left off. So let's play this let's play this again. So we can turn this back to one, so sort of actually erode. So what we're also going to do now is scale the mesh, and then type in multiply by float here. So what we're going to do is turn this float right here into a curve. So now pick the, the last handle right here, set this to one. Also make another key and set the first, first down to like a zero. And also make sure to select both keys and then turn them into auto interpolation. And we're sort of going to hand place this in sort of a curve like this. So you can see it will scale up very rapidly. So this is mainly to get that sort of burst feeling. And as you can see, this will then uh, lead to that. So that should be good. Like one, one thing to take note here is that we need to set the facing mode to velocity right now. So this means it all, if all goes well, the mesh should now face the like the mesh should now face towards the velocity vector that you should now set, which in this case was x. So this should be like working properly. So and just save this. And actually, before we move on, make sure to set the life cycle mode to self, and set the inactive response to complete and set the loop behavior to once because what we'll do now is make sure that everything is 
a single burst and w that's something that we then uh, can later re-trigger inside of our sequencer. So just make sure that everything in the emitter state is set to uh, to this setting. So let's move on with our uh, muscle flash side view and let's grab our muscle flash side and drag it into our timeline. So let's see how it looks now. And then actually grab the end bit right here and set it so it loops a bit quicker. Let's see, we can actually see that it's already working quite well, but I don't really like the scaling of the sprite, so we're gonna, gonna adjust this. So it needs to scale up quite quickly. And also put this slope to something similar. And actually make this a bit smaller overall. I could want to make sure that it's very elongated. Let's see, you can also maybe then increase the overall size just a little bit. I think that should be about, about right. But as you can see here, uh, as I sort of mentioned before, the actual sprite is now facing towards the camera, all, although still being velocity aligned. So once you see it from the front, it will sort of disappear. And that's what the front, front blast is now doing. It's sort of catching that, uh, like the, the angle it's sort of catching the obtuse angle you f view it from, but it's still allowing it to feel as a like a um, like a volumetric effect. I think in terms of size, it should be now all good to go. So what we're going to do now is put down the sparks, and we're going to do this in sort of two parts. Uh, what we're going to add is add some darker sparks to to it all, and also add some lighter sparks that actually look a bit brighter. And what to do is actually save this first and then drag in two spark bursts, number one and number two. And before we're going to actually adjust these, just make sure to also name, name your emitters and this is done by then double clicking over on this section and then turn this into front blast. And let's say side blast. Let's name this dark sparks and light sparks. Or to see how they look. And right now, as you can see, they sort of not really are going into the right direction. So let's disable the light sparks and start with the dark sparks first. So what we'll do here in the burst in instantaneous, we are going to change this down to seven. You don't want it to be too many. And what we're also going to do is uh, actually put down the sparks material. Let's see if we can grab it from here. In this case, we're going to grab our poly spark instance. And this is just something that I did was, uh, this is just something that I Add it as an instance and left the um, like parameters unchanged, pretty much. So that's what we're going. That's what we're going to add right here. As you can see, this sort of are already working. If we now move on to the mess module, 
we're going to reduce the height to 3. And if we go to our general particle spawn settings, we can change the lifetime to something like 0 0.15 and 0 0.25 going to increase our mass to 5 and 7 so they should become like a little bit bigger like the overall size we're going to fix this a little bit later now so now going to move on to the velocity and cone so we're going to fix the actual alignment right here and what we'll do is we're going to Change the cone axis to X and set the Y to zero. See now it's going into the right direction. And we are going to change the cone angle to 90. And then change the velocity distribution along, along cone to 0 0.2. So this will then not really strictly follow the, the 90 degree roll for the cone angle all of the time. So that gives a bit of more randomization. So what we're also going to do is put down a sub UV animation node and then change this to random. And let's start the start frame is zero and the end frame is two. And in order for it to show it, if you go down to the sprite renderer, we actually need to define how many uh, like sub images the, this, um, this texture has. So what we'll do is we, we put down the X in to three and the Y is in one. And as you can see, they are sort of working now. What I'm actually going to do is, is increase the sparks by, I think, just a little bit so they can linger just I, like a tiny bit longer. And I think, yeah, let's see what they do for now. So if we're now going to move on to the particle update, We can pretty much turn the gravity force off because they're not really going to contribute anything um, really to this overall uh, like emitter. Going to increase the drag to two. So they go out with a lot of force, but then also get stopped a bit more rapidly. And maybe dial in a bit of a higher number to compensate for it to see if this works. Let's say, let's go for 10. Or maybe just a tiny bit lower, just to 7. All right. So if we now go over to our scale sprite size by speed, we're going to up the minimum scale factor to 2 in X and 3 in the Y and do the same for the max scale factor. See, they, they now already started to become a lot bigger. And what we'll do is we're going to set this first handle to a value of one. And the other handle right here is going to set to a value of zero. And that should be it for that. So, and the final thing we're going to do is the scale color. And for the alpha, we're going to grab both of these handles and set the interpolation to auto. So the fall off is a bit smoother. And what we're going to do for the color right now is turn this into a curve, a scale linear or a scale linear curve from curve in this case. So what, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to make it uh, like a sort of a heat map for these sparks and 
we're going to make the sort of similar looking colors for the for the front blast and the side blast and transfer transfer like and transfer these colors into the sparks themselves so what we'll do right here is grab some kind of a desaturated yellow right here I think what we can also do is maybe turn this overall value up to 5 or so. Or oh, actually, let's leave it at 1. Should, that should be fine. What we're going to do then is grab a darkish purple. Turn it, turn it more towards the bluish. And then transition this and then copy this key over right here and then turn this into another key and then make this a bit of a more saturated purple right like like this actually let's just desaturate this just a tiny bit and i think that should be good so what this does is then it goes from really bright to sort of a darkish purple and this is uh, something that we're going to touch upon later so uh, this is sort of ties into the element that we're going to touch upon later and then it goes back to uh, like a more desaturated lighter purple again and that sort of ties together with the outer core of this uh, of this uh, frog blast But let's see if this is all working. This is all working well. I think we can put the drag up to ten again because I think the dark sparks are not really. I mean, the, the dark sparks are going out too too much. And maybe also up the velocity right here to. 2250 or so. And they, they really need to move fast, but also need to grind to a halt quite quickly. I'm going to check. This is all good. And I think that should be fine. All right. I actually put initially put down two of these notes right here, but to think to make things a bit easier for ourselves, we can actually delete this and then simply copy this and make make these our lighter sparks. So turn this into light sparks. And also make sure to save. And what we're going to do for these is turn up the burst instantaneous to like around 10 so make this a bit more prevalent also make them last a bit longer so in the particle spawn right here i think i'm going to put this up to 0.3 just to check 0 0.5 and add velocity in cone we're going to decrease the cone angle to like around 60, see if this works well. And what you're gonna also do is actually reduce the mass quite a bit to one and maybe two. Like need to be quite tiny overall, I think. That should be should be like a good look. I think we're also gonna put on the gravity force. But also put down the drag number so they shoot out a bit further. I think we should also maybe decrease the strength of, th of this a little bit more. And like give a bigger minimum and maximum velocity. I mean the difference between needs to be like a little bit bigger. Let's see. 
think the drag could be even lower. Like two, they need to really shoot down in this case. All right. Actually, let's move on with the color. Because I think this should still be good in terms of for the uh, scale sprite size by speed. That should be should be good enough. But for the skill color, what you're actually going to do here is do the same thing as we did for the scale color right here. But actually turn the value of this up to, let's say, uh, like 5. Or maybe actually turn it into the desaturated yellow we start with. And as you can then see, it turns into sort of the, the bright sparks right here. And let's see, I think it's actually flying out just a bit too much still. And maybe let's actually vary this up a little bit more. See if you put down like three and five or see what's going to do. Yeah, as you can see, feels a bit better, I think. Let's actually view it in our engine, see uh, how it looks. Yeah, I think that's already starting to feel pretty nice. All right, so what we're going to do now is add our flash. So what we're going to grab is the the flash emitter and put us down into our timeline so also a thing to take note of is that um, the order of the timeline will determine the um, the sort order of each emitter so let's make sure to put this on top so it will get rendered in front of everything else because it sort of needs to be quite prevalent. But on the other hand, since it's going to be uh, like on screen for a very short time, don't think it should be bad, too big of an issue. So let's see what it looks like right now. Oh, and actually, before I forget, I actually need to make sure that the actual uh life, life cycle mode are set to self and then to once as you can see yeah i seem to have forgot it myself so let's take care of that right now so again for this one oh wrong one to self and to once to self and loop behavior to once and do the scene right here, set to self and to once. Okie do. So we're going to grab, uh, actually, let's say first, and let's grab our star flash and then add it to the sprite renderer. Boom, right here. Uh, as you can see, it's already starting to work. So, I think for the burst, you can leave it as is because we only need one instance. The camera offset could actually be set to minus one in this case. And then for the update, I think the most will happen in the skill color right here. So, let's take care of that now. Or the curve could actually be made into something like this so it needs to slope down sort of like this as you can see the the points need to be visible first and then it turns into and then it needs to sort of uh like erode away once you've done that but as you can see i think i need to invert this curve for the skill sprite size so let's see 
let's take care of that now. Make the endpoint set to one and set this one to zero in, the, in the, the terms of the value and add another key here. And what you're actually gonna do now is scale up quite fast, like boom. Yeah, something along these lines. And let's see. What you also need to add into this is the dynamic material parameters. So this will be the invert gradient um, parameter that we added in, into our material. I'm going to use this for coloring like our effect. But let's first take care of our colors first. So what we'll do now is put down four keys. Like this, or actually put down five keys also at the end right here. So you can basically see uh, these keys as the flash frame because we're going to turn this into sort of very dark purple. I'll actually copy this over and delete this one. So this is kind of the like very dark purple. As you can see, it's already sort of, sort of act as the flash frame for this one. So what we're also going to do is um, bring it sort of to the same saturated yellow as the sparks and set the value to like maybe solid five. And also do the same thing right here, like around five. And I guess I, and I think the end could be left at this pretty much. All right. As you can see, the lifetime is still a bit too high. And the size is also not correct yet. So what I'm going to do is put this to let's say 400 and let's put the lifetime to 0 0.1 and I think there is a bit of a problem here because I think the erosion is not really working too well because it sort of disappears too fast I think and let's see we're going to actually decreased slope a little bit of this one as you can see it needs to be quite fast but it ne still needs to be visible that it's uh, that it gets eaten away maybe even put this to like a time of two yes i think this should be about correct so And the one final thing we need to take care of is the actual like inversion of that uh, that gradient I just mentioned before. And let's say let's keep the same timings or at least uh, key times for the dark darkest purple. And then go to uh, go to our dynamic material parameter and then turn this into a curve and put down two keys around the same time. Like in this case, 1.13 and 0.38, and set these to the value of one. But what you're going to do is basically let them scale down quite fast. So eyeball them and sort of give them a very sl steep slope, and make sure they are both set to zero in terms of value. Maybe we need to adjust them just just a little bit more. Yeah, that seems about right. I think it really gets that sort of kick. I think that's working really well. From the looks of it, 
from this angle it's not really in the right position in terms of camera offset so put this to two see if that works Yeah, I think this feels correct. I think maybe, let's see how it looks in engine. And maybe make this just a bit brighter. I think uh, like the color is not really working too well here. Maybe keep them bright, just like this. Maybe turn this up to like a value of 10. Save again. Let's see how this looks. Let's see. Excuse me, sort of the flash frame right here is not really too visible, I think. So let's see what we can do about that. Like make the time mix a bit bigger here. And also make sure that if you then in scale these in the scale color, also make sure to adjust these in the the invert gradient. as well let's check those not seem to be working too well yet let's see again Hmm, let's see. A turn is a bit higher. See if this has to do with the scale sprite size. Let's see, this works. And I think, let's see, I think this make this a bit smoother. It's really subtle, but I think it still has sort of that uh, violent scaling up effect that I wanted. I think that should be it. Um, actually, maybe in decrease the overall size just a tiny bit to 350 for now so I think it was a bit too big all right I think that should be it for this one so let's move on to the final element of this uh, this effect right now and that should be the shock wave so what we'll do for that is bring in another mesh emitter and put this down right here. And let's see. Let's save again. All right, so we're, what we're going to do is pick the ring right here and then add this into our mesh renderer. In this case, what I did was I already applied the uh, poly ring material onto this. Like in my case, I did not import it with the um, like material that I mentioned before, but I sort of circumvented this by just simply applying it into the um, like mesh editor right here. So they are like uh, added to both poly strips. So let's start dialing this in and let's see how it's working. Let's see, you can actually 
make sure to actually rename this to Shockwave. And also isolate this by turning these off. So of course, let's start off with going to our emitter update and turn the life cycle mode to self and set it to once. We're going to start off with setting our spawn burst to one. And if we go over to our particle spawn general settings, we need to actually give the mesh a size. So let's turn this to uniform and set this to 0 0.2 for now. Going to sort of see what it's doing. Randomize the lifetime and set this to 0 0.6 and 0 0.4. And then we're going to add a velocity, add velocity, and fix the, issue, fix the issue again. Set it to 1. In initial mass orientation, we're going to change this to... Going to change this to local. And set the initial rotation right here to 1. Can view this right here. See if it's all working. Doesn't seem like it. Because I think we still need to add the velocity alignment in the mesh render right here. See if it's working now. Yes, I think it does. All right. So let's move on to our scale mesh size. So type in multiply by float and turn this into a curve. And let's do the same thing for the mesh bursts and turn this into a curve that sort of rapidly scales up. Putting down another key, let's do zero and set the end to one. And turn all of it, all of the interpolation to auto. And let it ramp up very, like very fast or fairly fast. I think this will do. And if you go to the color, we're going to also add a curve to this. As you can see, the erosion is already starting to work. But also actually invert these values. And right now, set this to 0. Uh, set this to 1. And set the interpolation to auto. So you get sort of a smoother, uh, smoother erosion. So in the skill RGB, we're going to turn this into a into a color or actually let's turn it into a color linear color from RGB and then turn this into a scale linear color by curve. So what we're going to do is add three curves right here or at least three keys I mean. So, set this to yellow in the beginning. Sort of the same desaturated yellow we have been using for the most part. And then turn this into the darkish purple, but keep it very saturated. I think more towards the blue. And this one we sort of put in a like transition color and put this down to sort of a pinkish color. So that should be good. So what we're gonna do now is also add a system location to this particle. 
and actually give it a local offset of 70. So if we then turn everything back on again, this one now indicates sort of our shockwave of our like muscle flash. And something else we're going to do is we're going to copy or actually add another spawn burst to the emitter update. Set it to one. And if you then show advanced, set the actual spawn group to one. So what we're going to do is take this burst and add some, um, some notes to this that are specific to this, uh, to this spawn group. So what we're going to do now is add another s system location and set this to like around 180 or so. If we show, go to show advanced and turn on the spawn group mask and set this to one. So, and as you can see right now, this is uh, then spawning this into this area right here. But we want to make this, this particle right here a bit smaller. So the shockwaves sort of become a bit smaller as they move further from the barrel. So for that, we go to the particle spawn and actually turn this um, mesh size into, if we can turn this back to its previous settings. I think we can still keep this uniform, but what we're gonna do is um, multiply this. I uh, see we need to actually not multiply these, but add these together. That was kind of my mistake. Turn this back and then add float. And set this to 0 0.2 in this case. I'm gonna make this a bit bigger. And then turn this into the spawn group. So mask float by spawn group. So turn this into 0 0.3. And then set the spawn group mask to 1. So, and as you can see, this instant right now is becoming a bit smaller than the previous one. So if you want to scale this down a bit more and turn this path, path through float to uh, like a higher value. But as you can see, they sort of scale individually from each other. So if you want to reduce that scale a bit, I think you can also reduce this overall number down a bit. And that should be it for, for this, I think. So Let's see if we need to change anything. Let's test it in our engine. And I think it should all work properly now from the looks of it. Like I just did to your likings. I think that should be it for now. So I think it should be it for now. So. In our next video, we're going to actually implement it into a sequence and then combine this together with our character. So see you in the next one. All right, so let's start putting everything together into our sequencer. So let's select our test systems and delete them. And then make sure to open your sequence. What we do then is go to our folder where Lieutenant Bellica is set in so let's go to the folder go to characters heroes pelica and uh, meshes and then select the skeletal mesh and this is indicated by the pink stripe at the bottom and then drag this in also look for our effect in your polyblast folder and also drag this in. So, first.
first add Bellica to the track and this is by selecting Bellica right here and then press track act it to sequencer and then add and then add the polyblast by doing the same thing add it to sequencer and then add all right so i'm going to use some shooting animation and this can be accessed by adding an animation track right here and let's go for primary fire fast so as you can see it will now just play once but if you simply drag it out it will it will just repeat itself again just like this what we can also do is to simply add another animation track and maybe set to idle and if you then place it like this it will then automatically start blending together once the loop has ended all right so what we do now for the polyblast is add a attach track and then if you go to attach and then go to existing binding and then select bellica and then look for the smg barrel so this is a uh, attachment that is set to the gun and then add make sure it is then dragged out for the entirety of the loop and what we do then is we need to make sure that the transforms are reset so it is now in the correct position so usually for triggering Niagara components you put down a life cycle track but since we want to make it repeat we can't really use that because it will only play once and then it cannot be re-triggered again with the same life cycle track so what we're going to do is go to the track go to the Niagara component and then on the Niagara component add a event track and then select trigger so let's start by putting down a key and double click on that key to open the event well, in this case it's just a blueprint event so what we do now is we need to add a an extra parameter could simply add a boolean right here because it should be good and let's name this reset and also make sure to rename our event name and let's make it activate trigger if you then pull out the blue node here and let's look for activate like this and also make sure to plug this into the reset and that should be fine and I click save if you then right click on this event event key and go to properties make sure to call in editor and reset and let's see if it works yep should be good and if we want to just copy this over then it should also automatically reactivate this component for you now so let's put it put this on the loop So one at the beginning and let's see if it all works by pressing G and make sure all the icons are gone and see if it all works so there we go and like based on this you can then change things to your liking if you feel anything is off still and I think that should be about it for the sequencer. And I'm really looking forward to all of your results. Thanks for watching, guys.